welcome, 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 welcome to Sunday School at Admoni Temple Church of God in Christ in Temecula, California. We welcome all, everyone in our virtual sanctuary and also everyone that is here today. We're going to start out, we're going to speak about the spirit and flesh today. So we're going to start out um, by prayer. Uh, Elder Margo, will you uh, open us up in prayer, please? Father, we thank you on this day for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless each and every one that's represented, whether here or on a media. Oh, Father, we just thank you and pray that you would bless, O oh God, each and every household that's represented. Remember the sick and afflicted on today. Touch the bodies of your people everywhere, God. From the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Meet us here, O oh God, in the lesson and speak to our hearts and our minds. We pray, O oh God, that you would uh, illuminate us, enlighten us to what the Spirit of God has to say on today. And we ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Bless our teacher on this morning. Amen. 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 Well, good morning again. And today we're continuing on with the fall quarter. And it's God's law is love. And we're in unit two, faith triumphs, law fails. And again, today's lesson, spirit and flesh. Um, the background scripture is from Galatians 3, 1 through 18. But our lesson is going to be from Galatians 3, 1 through 14. The devotional reading is Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. So when you have time, um, read that. That's about our redemption in Christ. So Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. So we're going to read the, our key scripture is Galatians 3 and 2. And it says, this only will I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So again, we're going to be talking about the spirit and the flesh, which is an um, awesome lesson today. Yeah. Uh, last week, Pastor Mason uh, taught on the works and uh, faith. The Jewish com converts were at odds with the newly converted uh, Galatians, the Gentiles, some of the Galatians. And the Judaizers were trying to infiltrate the church and try to tell the people there that they were um, required to follow the Jewish law. And Paul came and he was letting them know that that wasn't so. They could, it was by faith. This is, they, they were part of the new covenant. So, and um, I'm just going to go and to, the, to today's lesson. So we're going to read the scripture. And this is from the New King James Version. Uh, Galatians 3, 1 through 14 says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, or are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of, the, of faith. Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithfulness, faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that he might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So may God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. So in today's lesson, Paul's letter to the Galatians addressed the false teachings. Even though it says the, um, the Spirit... And the flesh, and we'll get more into that because we know we all deal with our, we battle with our spirit and our flesh. But we're going to go into this lesson. So today's lesson, 
he addressed the false teaching that were going out in the churches. And that was that it was necessary to keep the Jewish law in order to be saved. And we know now that that's not the case. God wants us to be in relationship with him and fellowship. And this relationship is based on faith rather than works. And so Paul had to address this with the Galatians because they were operating um, and not what he had told them. So just like I said, when Galatians um, 5 and 5, that, uh, verse 5, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verses 16, and I'll read 16 through 18, and I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and that's Galatians 5, 16 through 18. I say then, walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So that is what Paul was trying to address, and that's key for us. If you have time, you can read the entire um, chapter, Galatians chapter 5. But getting back to the lesson, our lesson today is from Galatians chapter 3. And basically, Paul was just trying to address this issue because, he, had, like I said, he had taught them well. And he knew what they were supposed to be following. But um, he's going to address that. So we're going to start out um, after the law is the first part of this um, lesson. And it's um, talking about foolishness. And verse 1 says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? So Paul addressed the churches as foolish, not because they were um, uninformed, but because he knew that they knew the truth, but they weren't acting on it. So he was basically telling them, like, you know, like you have our, our parents who tell you, like, you know better. You go out there and you start acting up or whatever, and you come back and then find out, you, you know better. So he was just telling them, you know better. You already know the truth. I have already taught without error what, what you're supposed to. I taught you the gospel. You're supposed to follow the gospel, but they were following some false teachings. So somehow they had turned away from what he had taught them, and he was going to he was addressing the matter with them. So um, bewitched is is root is root word comes from our word fantastic, which uh, or I'm sorry, fan, fascinate, which means to enthrall, be enthralled, or entertain. But Paul was talking in this particular part when he was talking about bewitched, he's talking about uh, more of like there was a cast, an evil spell that was cast on someone. And there were musicians, and there were witches at that time, but he wasn't talking about that. He was literally just saying to them that um, the effect of this false teaching was having a negative effect on them. And so that's what the, um, the place where he was coming from, that the false teachings, it was affecting how they were um, serving God at this time. He, was, he had clearly laid the foundation for them by teaching them the gospel, but they had abandoned the truth. They, had, they, were, uh, mis they didn't misunderstand it. They, were just, they had abandoned it. They had turned away from it. And so Paul was perplexed, and he was going to address this issue with them. Okay. So verse 2 says, um, This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So right here, Paul was asking a contrasting question between the works of the law, which is the obedience to the law of Moses and the hearing of faith. The difference between the Old Testament um, and New Testament people is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in our, the gift of the Holy Spirit experienced by the believers in Galatia is part of the new covenant. The gift of the, um, and back in the Old T Testament, it was more of a prophetic thing. It wasn't, they didn't have the Holy Spirit back then, like we have it, the Holy Spirit right now, because Jesus had to come and he had to die. At that time, he hadn't come and died at that time. So um, he was just addressing that. He was just asking the question. Um, again, it says, this only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So he was just letting them know they need to get back to what he had taught them. It was by their faith, not by the works or by the law. Okay. Um, verse number three. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So again, Paul uses the word foolish. And it was, again, not that they didn't know or they, they were not informed, but they were just, they had abandoned it. They were misinformed. They were following some other doctrine or some other law. Like I said, but when the pastor spoke last week, 
he was talking about the works in the flesh and the, those old Jews, the, um, the original, if I could say that, the, they were, uh, they were um, following the law. So they were teaching that that was what they needed to do, but Paul had told them otherwise. So when he used the, foolish, the word foolish again, he was saying they started out well by receiving the spirit through faith. He had laid the groundwork for them. Now they were trying to live their Christian life in the flesh. And we just read Galatians 5, 16 through 18. We cannot do that. The spirit is contrary to the flesh. You can't live that life. And so he was letting them know that they could not live that way. That would never work. It was foolish for them to even think that that was possible. So in Romans 7 and 18, it says, For I know in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to uh, will is, to, is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. We cannot even depend or rely on our flesh in any way, shape, or form because, or operate in it because that is contrary to the Spirit of God. We can only be complete through surrendering to Christ Jesus and depending on the Holy Spirit. And that's what the, um, Paul was trying to bring that back to them to let them know. That's the only way that you can walk out this Christian life. You cannot depend on the law. You can't even, we can't even follow all those, I don't even know, thousands of laws they had back then. We all were, like Pastor said, we would all have been dead if we tried to <laughs> follow those laws, you know. But then um, Paul is just trying to address this. He had a, a compassion and a heart for these people. Because God sent him to the Gentiles to preach the word of God. So he had a heart and a compassion for them. And he wanted them to um, live out a victorious life through Christ. Mm -hmm. So, And that's what um, he was teaching them. Uh, verse number four says, Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be, ye, uh, be yet in vain? So here he was talking about... Uh, and then I'm going to read, um, so four and five. And then he says, he therefore that ministers to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth, it, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So again, Paul is telling them that um, they cannot do this. They cannot um, operate in this the way, this manner, because it will not be productive for them. Okay. And then we're going to go into the second part, which is before the law. And then um, in this lesson, Paul is trying to bring home what he's trying to uh, teach them. So he brings up about Abraham. So this is about Abraham's faith. In verse 6, it says, even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. He brings him into discussion just to uh, drive the point that he's trying to make. It was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Does anybody know what, what that means? What does that mean? In verse number six, it says, even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. What does it mean to be accounted to him for righteousness? Anybody? To be held responsible? To be, Mom said to be held responsible? But you said... Again. Okay, the verse, verse 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Accounted? Yes. Meaning to be responsible for what you do, okay. or not doing? Be responsible for what you do and not doing, okay. Anyone else? Well, Abraham had, uh, that's the whole thing about faith. Abraham had faith in God. Um, and, uh, and so because he believed God and he was obedient to God and relied on God, and that's what all faith is, trusting in, taking God at his word, then God accounted back to him for righteousness. So at that time, uh, so there, um, uh, and, and that's what it is, faith, uh, we, believe, we serve God and we are justified through faith, our faith in God. And so even, uh, even before the church got started in the Old Testament, Abraham did what God wants us to do now, just take him and believe in faith. So it's Abraham's faith that uh, justified him in the sight of God, made him right in the sight of God because he believed God. Amen. Amen. Just to add to that, uh, he was an example of righteousness. I would just like to add to that. Amen. But I, I think you go back from the first time he called Abraham and told Abraham to leave his family, leave from earth and go out. 
So God know Abraham would make mistakes along the way, mm -hmm. but God counted to him for righteousness because he stepped out on faith from the beginning and he believed God was going to take care of him, which I can add. We believed God was going to take care of him along the way. So it was a step by step, step by step thing as he went out. Amen. Do you know how much faith he ha Abraham had to have in order to follow what God said? He said, get up from your family and go, and I'm going to take you to land. Abraham didn't know where he was going. He didn't know how he was going to get there. He didn't have any provision. I mean, he didn't know any of that. And that was um, in uh, Gal uh, Genesis 15 is this quote. But um, it took great faith. He had to trust God. Mm -hmm. He had to believe God. And all along the way, God was dealing with him. Even through all of the difficulties Abraham had, God still, he still remained faithful. He still trusted God. So that was the account, like you, but everyone is saying, God accounted it to him as righteousness. So does anybody else have anything to say about that? Yes, sir. It also Mr. says in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 8, it says, By, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. So uh, he's, he's uh, they, I guess they, you know, some people call this the hall of faith. Yes. So, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. So he he's, in, he's in this hall of faith here. Amen. An example of faith. Right. So he used Abraham because he was a great example. Like you say, he's a, one of the uh, hall of faith champions. And so God, um, when Paul was using him as an example, Abraham as an example to the Galatians, he was letting them know, this is how you operate. You, got, you have to trust God. God. Moses, he didn't, I mean, I'm sorry, Abraham, he didn't take the law and say, okay, I'm going to follow the law. He says, I'm going to go walk by faith, not by sight. He just said, I'm going to go. God, if you, if you said it, I'm going to go. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to take my wife and, and my nephew, and we're going to go. And, he, and God, along the way, even to this day, God has, has been blessing the seed of Abraham because of his obedience. So yes, that was good. Okay, so and then he continued on uh, in verse 7. It's talking about Abraham's family. So know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So the promise was made to Abraham, and Abraham's faith was his defining trait. We can see that. Because like we said, he just he had to leave everything, everything that he was familiar with, everything that he knew. Just imagine God saying, you have to get pick, pack up your stuff and leave your family, your home, your job, whatever. Would you be willing to do that? But Abraham did that, and his faith was his defining trait. And we as believers, and um, we act as children of Abraham when our faith in God defines us as well. So that's the important thing. So what, what kind of things would prevent us from being recognized um, as God's faithful children? What kind of things are, would we do or what kind of things happen in our lives that would prevent us from doing that? Yes, sir. Disobedience. Absolutely. No but, is any lesson. <laughs> yeah. Disobedience. Yes. the flesh. Yeah, the flesh. There's nothing good found in the flesh. That's what the word says. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Sin. Yes, Sin. Sin, disobedience, all of these things will keep us um, from being recognized as children of God. Right now, there are people that don't recognize the church because there's the people in the world that come in and they're serving, but their hearts are far from God. They're not fully committed and submitted. And that's a dangerous thing because that's how people get led astray. But that's another lesson. Okay, so verse 8 says, And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, therefore faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. Before the gospel was ever preached, God had made it clear Abraham, that to Abraham that all nations would be blessed through him. And that's according to Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Justification through faith opened the door to any person who believes in Jesus Christ regardless of their association or connection with Israel. So that's us. We're all the Gentiles. The door was open to us. Thanks, thank God that we got in. You know, so if there's no Greek 
Gentile, Jew, or whoever, everyone has an opportunity to learn about Christ, to accept Christ. It's a gift. You have to, they, we have to accept it. He's not going to force us. He's not going to make us. We have to accept this gift. And that's where um, people need to, get, to understand that. Yes, and we have to accept, like uh, Elder Margot was saying, we have to accept Jesus Christ, and it's by our faith. Everything, God said, it says without faith, it's impossible to please God, because we have to have faith to believe that God even exists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this by faith, and that's the most important thing. And like our um, elder was talking about, he's talking about this is, there's a battle right now between our spirit and our flesh. Our flesh want to do whatever he wants to do. But we have to bring it under subjection to the spirit that's inside of us. And the way that we do that is you got to stay in your word. You have to stay obedient. You have to be, like we were talking about Abraham, you have to listen to when God tells you to move and what he tells you to do. Even when we don't feel like it. Even when we don't understand. Even when we don't even know. Even when we don't feel like we're worthy. Because none of us is worthy to do anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, you know, daily is a daily thing. We're not going to wake up Sunday morning and try to, try to get right to God. Try to yes. Right. We'll be right to stay right with God every single day. Well, if it's by faith, a certain religion, you know, they go around with knocking on the door uh, daily. And so if they just believe. That if you live right, if you do this right, if you do this right, if you do this right, you'll get a pathway to heaven. If you just believe that you're a good person and all that. But is just believing, is that faith? Just believing? You know, as they pass out tracks and try to get people on every corner and all that, they just believe that they, well, really they believe Jesus was just another prophet. But they believe you just live right, believe right, do this right, and do all that stuff. Community, treat people right. Is that faith? Anyone want to ask? Faith would be anything. I have faith that this chair would hold me, so I sat down. <laughs> right. But we're talking about faith in the person of Jesus Christ. We no. have a relationship. Well, I'm so nice. Oh, yeah, I'm just saying. So the, qu- the question was, were the uh, Jehovah's Witness, when they go out and they're going out and they're knocking on the door, they believe what they want, they believe, they truly believe what they're being taught, but the, it's absence of the truth. And the truth is that you, you can't come to God without knowing Jesus Christ. You have to submit and surrender your life. And they believe that Jesus was just the prophet. Well, how can they believe that Jesus is the prophet and then say that Jesus is Lord and serve him at the same time and their work be um, perfect or their work be uh, acceptable to God? And Elder Margo is saying, no, their works, they, you know, we have faith. I'm sitting in this chair. I have faith that I was going to sit down and I wasn't going to fall down. And, you know, we have faith in those things, but we have to have faith in God. Okay, that's it. <laughs> We have to have faith in God and belief in Jesus Christ that God sent him and that he, he is the son of God. I mean, he is the, that Jesus is the son of God and that we accept him as Lord and Savior. That's the part they're missing. There's no, nobody can do any good works. We're not good. without No, no one is good. The only person without faith is me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else want to add anything to yeah. that? And anytime somebody comes to our Lord and they using something other than the Bible, we should know right away <laughs> that hey, you know, this is not for me. What they bring to my house is not for me because I believe in one true God, the great God of the holy life, and that's it. And then you also have to be careful because they have their own Bibles. So you have to make sure that you have a true version, you know, New King James, King James, whatever, something that is correct, not things that are taken out for the, I mean, all these different religions have their own Bible. They don't, they twisted the scripture and they put their own word in there. 
So just because they're walking around with a Bible, you just make sure that they're speaking the word. And the way that you know that they're speaking the word is you have to have the word inside of you. So that when you hear it, it's like, wait, that doesn't sound right. No, right. let me go to my scripture. Yeah, they told me my word was don't even let them in the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have to let them in the house, but I'm just yeah. saying if they come to you and, you know, you go outside, step outside your door. Don't, well, you know. Yeah, because if you know, know the truth and you want to tell them the truth. You know, they may not listen, but you never know if, if you, you plant that seed, it's like, okay, wait a minute. Because I know that one came, a Jehovah's Witness came to my door. I had my Bible because I was doing Bible study. I happened to be doing my studying. And I had my own Bible. And they were talking. I was like, no, let me go to my Bible and show you. And so one of the young ladies, she was just like, I could tell she was thinking about what I was saying. But um, the other lady, she was just hardcore. Like, I don't know if she was the recruiter or whatever she was, but... Um, she was trying to get me to understand. I was like, no, this is what my Bible says. So Amen. that's what I'm saying. You have to be careful because they do have their own Bible. Uh, if, their own, I'm just gonna, I'm not going to say Bible. I'm just saying they have their own book. <laughs> so we know that the only, the true and living word is the word of God. So, yeah. And so for, in verse 9 it says, so then they which have, uh, be of faith are blessed with faithfulness, with faithful Abraham. So in verse 9, is anyone who is faithful to Christ Jesus is blessed. And so when I was doing my study, I um, did a, came across, let me see, in Luke 9 and 49 and 50, Luke 9, 49 and 50 says, Now John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbid him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. So basically anyone who is faithful to Christ Jesus is blessed, and he will reveal himself to us if we are open to receive um, what he has to say to us. And so the third part of the lesson is cursed under the law, and this is evidence of scripture. So Paul is bringing the evidence from the scriptures. And so he's going to talk about verse, um, in, ver in verse 10 it says, For as many are of, I'm sorry, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So it was, like we said before, it was impossible for us to follow all those laws, rules, and all of that stuff. But God, um, when he, God gave Moses the law, it was to keep them in order at that time. Because they were just doing all kinds of things. So God wanted to bring them together to have them follow after him. Um, because like I said, they were doing things that were not pleasing to God. That was back then in the Old Testament. But the New Testament were under um, a different covenant. Not that we negate like the... Ten Commandments. You still have to be, you know, do not kill, steal, and all of those things. But we're not under that. We're under the uh, new dispensation of grace right now. And so if a person broke the law back then for any reason, it didn't matter what law, you you were under the curse and you they would exact punishment right away. You were cursed or God would kill you or whatever. But now we're under his grace. So if the Galatians submitted themselves, this is what Paul was saying, if they submitted themselves to the works of the law, they would also be subjected to the curse. They had to accept the gospel based upon their faith, not works. And that's what the, he was trying to drive home to them. That it's all about your faith, not the works. Because you can, we can do the right thing anyway. You know, we need God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need him to guide us and stuff. And so, and then verse 11, it says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And that the just shall live by faith was a quote from Habakkuk, uh, verses uh, 2 and 4. So Paul quotes Habakkuk it, to further drive, make his point. And just like Habakkuk, our job is to trust God no matter what we think about a situation. We are to have faith in God and not lean on our own understanding. So Habakkuk, back then it was a time the, um, 
when the the, pe the evil pe they, the people were evil and selfish, they controlled this uh, southern kingdom of Judah. They were dishonest and unjust. So Habakkuk, God told Habakkuk what he was going to do. He was going to send them to Babylon and to wipe out the nation of Judah for their evil. And Habakkuk was basically telling God, like, no, that's too harsh. And God was telling him, um, it wasn't for him. God's answer to Habakkuk was that it was not for him to know or understand how God deals with us. But he was just to simply obey and to trust God. And that's the same with us. It's not our job to know what God is doing, but it's our job to stand in obedience. And it's our job to trust him and walk by faith. And so that's it. So um, in, when we're leaning on our understanding, then we're walking in that fleshly realm. We, we don't know. We think we know, but we have no idea. God can see the, the, big, the whole big picture. We only see, we're in it, so we only see a small fragment of it. We have no idea, <laughs> most of the time, of what's going on. So, um, and that's Psalm 3, 5, and 6 would say, lean not on our... Um, Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. So he will direct our path. We have to lean on him. We have to have faith in him and believe and trust in the word of God. And verse 12 says, and the law is not a faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So the law was given as a way to lead the Galatians to Christ so they might be justified. They were made righteous through their acceptance and faith in Jesus. That's what salvation is. We have to trust and have faith and accept Jesus as Lord. The law is not of faith, and that was the point that Paul was trying to make. The law is not of faith. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ, okay? And, and so does anyone have anything they want to say about that? He wasn't teaching them the Lord. He didn't say the Lord might have uh, been going that way. He didn't teach them the Lord. He taught them about faith. Yes. In God and lines on that. The Old Testament, again, was the Lord. Moses gave the Lord to them so that they could lead, as you said, uh, so that they could have a lifestyle that was semi pleasing that would lead up to you know, Jesus coming. So, um, as you said, um, there is, uh, as he was saying, there's no uh, middle ground between. Keeping uh, the Lord and faith as a means of salvation. So mm -hmm. the Lord is not a faith. You know, those of us who are in Christ Jesus, faith, we automatically, because we have the Spirit of God, we're automatically keeping the Lord. So it's not uh, um, we're doing the Lord in order to have relationships, but it's faith. Again, like you said, we just constantly try to drill that into them, that it's not the Lord. Amen. And that was an excellent point that um, Elder Margo made, that there's no middle ground. You can't operate in the works and then have faith. That's what he was saying. There's no middle ground. You can't operate under those, the law and then think that you could do faith. It's, it's the faith you have to have faith in God. That's, that's it. There's nothing else. That's it. <laughs> but, but another thing, too, uh, that's why I the bullets and the sheep and the goats and the sacrifices could not save us for the cause of the law. So if they couldn't do it, and that's one reason Jesus came, Absolutely. you know, to fulfill the law. As he fulfilled the law, he almost just took the law out and put the faith in. Amen. I think that's the easy way of saying it. Yes. You know. Yeah. So that's what Paul was trying to teach him that, you know, we're not saved by law, but by grace. Amen. We're saved by grace not by law. And verse 13 said, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Just what um, our elder was talking about. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The wages of sin is death. That is the curse of the law. Amen. We all deserve death, but we were delivered, we um, redeemed through Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross for our sins. He took our place. He was without sin, and he was the perfect sacrifice. So just like our elders said, those bulls, goats, doves, and all that stuff, they sacrificed back in the Old Testament. That wasn't necessary because Christ died for once for all. He did it for one time for everyone, for all sin. And that pleased God. That was acceptable. That was the, He met the requirement that God had set forth. And that's it. So praise God for Jesus. Thank God.
Thank you, Jesus. Like you see, after 2,000, 3,000 years, the people ain't caught on. That's a simple, so, seems so simple to me. That after all these years, like 2,000, 3,000 years, that the Muslims and uh, other, all those other groups and worship in these stack, they ain't caught on after all this time. Yeah, after all this time, 2,000 plus time. years. I mean, wow, we're more educated in the world, more knowledgeable. We have more technology to search out things now. And then all this time, no one can come. Yeah. Look, yeah. we have to remember, they still have free will. Yeah. They yeah. all have free will. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. They still have free will. Yeah, that's true. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. So because we all we all have access to salvation. But because of our free will, there are people who have rejected the gift of salvation. They ex they have ex um rejected Christ and they're going to suffer. Unfortunately, that's that is written in the books. You know, it's it's a sure it's sure. That's a sure thing. And then our last scripture is that the blessings that's verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hmm. Through the atoning work and of Jesus Christ, the Gentiles now, we have access to receive and um, to receive, we have access and we have uh, opportunity to receive the blessings of Abraham, which is seen through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's because, like we were just saying, the salvation was made to us. We were engrafted into the family of God. Amen. And that's where, that's where we are now. And so, it, like our um, elder was saying, it's dangerous now for people not to know or want to give their lives to Christ. Because the alternative is that you're going to hell. And that is not a place, I, I don't even think that people, some people don't even believe that it is it, real. But they will soon find out when they leave this life that hell is absolutely real if they do not give their lives to Christ. So that is our lesson. And does anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, I just want to oh. say that uh, before we close out. Okay. So, yeah, so as you were saying about uh, people in general, God, uh, thank God for his grace and his mercy. Yes. And, and we do have free will and all of that. Uh, choice, but as you said, um, um, the way, as the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, so I know you pay for your own lifestyle, or you let Jesus pay for it. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Amen, that's good. Mm -hmm. Can you, she, Elder Margo said, you either pay for your own lifestyle, or you let Jesus pay for your lifestyle, which he already did, all you gotta do is accept him. And that's, that's what we want to go back. Before we close out, we would like to extend. We'd like to thank all of you for coming, even our um, people that are viewing via live stream. And so salvation is easy. It's very easy. And it says Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, that's Romans 10, 9 and 10. But what, ha I'm sorry, yeah. That if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you just have to accept Jesus Christ, that you believe that Jesus did die on the cross for your sins, that you confess that you are a sinner, you accept the free gift of salvation, and ask God to come into your life, and he will save you. And we just pray that you are blessed, that once um, you go out, that... Um, you go out and you let the office know that you accepted Christ or if you want prayer just contact our church office if you have any questions regarding Sunday school you can contact Elder Brian at the church and we just thank everyone for being here and we pray that the service is blessed we're going to go into our um, service here in a short time and we just bless God and we ask um, someone to close us out Elder Haskells or Elder Washington. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you right now, God, for all that our eyes have seen and ears have heard. We thank you for this lesson on this morning, thank God. You. We thank you, God, that it spoke to our hearts and it spoke to our minds. We pray your blessings upon everyone on the sound of my voice. 
Oh God, we pray God that you bless the teacher this morning. God, continue to strengthen her. We ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. Jesus name. Thank God. Amen. 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 Amen.